Here's an overview of the novel The Cone Gatherers by Robin Jenkins. This video will look at the where, the when, the what and the who of The Cone Gatherers. Where? The Cone Gatherers is set on a traditional Highland estate in the north of Scotland. The action takes place mainly in the wood on the estate, which, until the arrival of the eponymous Cone Gatherers, was the place where Durer, the gamekeeper, went to escape from his difficult home life. However, now the Cone Gatherers are living in the wood, Durer has nowhere to seek solace, and this fuels his anger and contributes towards his descent into insanity by the end of the novel. When? The story is set in 1943 during the Second World War, which took place between 1939 and 1945. There's a reference in the opening paragraph of the novel to a destroyer, which sets the story during wartime. Rationing is also mentioned, as is the fact that Sir Colin, Lady Runcie Campbell's husband, is away fighting, whereas Durer was turned down by the army, another reason to make him angry. The action takes place over a five-day period in the autumn, a time when plant life is beginning to decay and die. What? In its 16 chapters, the story of the Cone Gatherers explores six important themes. The conflict between good and evil. Sacrifice. Social conflict arising from the class divide. Nature. Isolation. And religion. All six themes are highlighted through a combination of literary and language techniques, such as characterization, setting, symbolism, imagery, and several key incidents. These themes are explored in the novel in various ways. Through the opening chapter, when we first meet the lowly cone gatherers Neil and Callum working in the treetops within sight of the mansion house, and then the solitary, hatred-filled gamekeeper Durer. Through the dramatic turning point of the deer drive, when good, epitomised by the sensitive, nature-loving Callum, and evil, represented by the demonic, deer-slaughtering Durer, come into direct conflict with each other. Through the contrast between Callum's acceptance of his lowly status in life and Neil's bitter resentment of the way in which the working class is exploited and mistreated by those in higher social classes. And through Lady Runcie Campbell's inner turmoil about whether to follow her Christian upbringing or to act as befits her elevated social status and Durer's tumultuous inner conflict that eventually pushes him over the edge. Who? The Cone Gatherers features a number of key characters who are worthy of mention. The two Cone Gatherers, simple-minded hunchback Callum and his socially aware brother Neil. Durer, the estate's menacing gamekeeper. Lady Runcie Campbell, wife of wealthy estate owner Sir Colin. Roderick, the Runcie Campbell's insightful teenage son. Callum is a key character in the novel, as he represents good in the conflict between good and evil, which is one of the work's main themes. The young man's innocence and goodness become apparent right from the start of the novel, as does his close relationship with nature, when we learn that he is completely at home in the treetops, that birds do not fear him, and that his face is beautiful with trust. It also becomes clear in the opening chapter that Callum is both mentally and physically disabled, and that his brother Neil has to look out for him. Callum is content with his humble life and does not share his brother's resentment about the class divide which separates them and the Runcie Campbells. While Neil broods about them being housed in a small hut like a rabbit hutch, Callum is far more concerned about rescuing the rabbits trapped in Durer's snares in the wood. This, unfortunately, is one of the reasons that he makes an enemy of the gamekeeper. Callum's passion for the natural world and animals is most evident in Chapter 6 during the traumatic incident of the deer drive. With no regard for his own safety, the caring Callum throws himself on the deer to protect it. Likewise, when he finds a broken doll in the beach hut, his instinct is to want to repair it. Callum is described as being demoralised by hatred, and it's clear to the reader early on, possibly even from the moment that we learn Durer is aiming a gun at Callum, that he is no match for the evil Durer. So his eventual tragic death at Durer's hands is not a surprise to the reader. Nor is it surprising that the innocent cone gatherer's death is seen as an allegory for the crucifixion. For Callum's death brings hope for humanity in that it makes Lady Runcie Campbell, who represents the upper class, see the error of her ways. His sacrifice will lead to a better world for others. Neil has had to make sacrifices as well. We learn that he's had to look after his brother since their mother died, and this responsibility has meant that he could not go off to sea as he wanted to. It has also meant him missing out on romance in his life. There is a reference to someone he'd once met, 
and we're told that when he thinks about her, he experiences melancholy, a deep sadness. Neil is not accepting of his lowly situation in the way that Callum is. He feels a strong sense of injustice when he gazes at the mansion on page one of the novel. We're told it's as if he's waiting for something to change. Meanwhile, he has to bite his tongue when he's in public. Although when he's with Callum, his resentment spills over in his comments about the inhumane way they are treated by their social superiors. Neil's complaints highlight his dissatisfaction with the social structure which places him and Callum at the very bottom of the heap. Ironically, by the end of the novel, it is the death of his brother and its effect on Lady Runcie Campbell, together with the survival of Roderick, who's more aware of the unfairness of the current social hierarchy, that gives the reader hope that the change Neil so ardently desires may be on its way. Durer is the gamekeeper on the estate, which puts him below Lady Runcie Campbell in the pecking order, but well above the cone gatherers in the social hierarchy. Durer detests the cone gatherers and uses his influence over Lady Runcie Campbell to inflict as much suffering as possible on them. It rapidly becomes clear to the reader from what Durer says and does, for example, when bending the ear of Lady Runcie Campbell and persuading her to make the cone gatherers participate in the deer drive, that he is a thoroughly unpleasant character. Even at the start of the novel, when his appearance is still smart and he's still holding it all together, he cuts a menacing figure in the wood, with his gun pointed at Callum and Neil and hatred oozing out of his pores. As the story progresses, his character unravels further and his appearance becomes unkempt, his mood darker and his behaviour increasingly irrational, particularly evident at the turning point of the novel in chapter 6, where he slashes the deer's throat savagely in some kind of berserk joy. The doctor imagines snakes writhing around in Durer's mind, which is also symbolic of evil because of the serpent from the Garden of Eden. Granted, Durer's life is not easy, and his one redeeming feature is that despite being repulsed by his morbidly obese wife, he still lives with and cares for her. However, to cope with this, he had been in the habit of escaping into the wood on the estate, his sanctuary. The arrival of the two cone gatherers means that the wood is no longer a safe haven for him, especially given that he has always detested deformity and hunchback Callum epitomises everything he hates. As he descends into madness, his evil knows no bounds and it seems almost inevitable that he will eventually kill Callum, hoping that it will bring his mind peace. However, it's quickly apparent that it does no such thing, so he has to kill himself as well. The fourth main character in the novel is Lady Runcie Campbell, the wife of Sir Colin, the owner of the estate where the novel's action takes place. With Sir Colin away fighting in the Second World War, it's left to Lady Runcie Campbell to run the estate and make decisions. Understandably, she relies on her staff to assist her with this, but her failure to resist Durer's manipulation shows her to be misguided and weak at times in the novel. She's also portrayed in a negative light when Roderick challenges her about the way in which she treats the cone gatherers, which he perceives to be unfair. She chastises her son harshly for being too soft and not adopting the superior attitude towards the lower classes that would be expected of the landed gentry at that time in history when the class structure still observed a strict hierarchy. Her attitude is very much at odds with her Christian upbringing and family background. Her father was a judge who believed in justice and fairness. This creates a significant inner conflict in Lady Runcie Campbell's head, but for most of the story she chooses to ignore her Christian conscience, despite Roderick's comments and disapproving silences. It's not until the end that she acknowledges her actions have been misguided when she kneels symbolically under Callum's dead body and weeps. Last but definitely not least comes Roderick, Lady Runcie Campbell's son, a slightly naive but admirably principled 14-year-old. Although he is portrayed as physically frail, Roderick has strong opinions on the matters of equality and justice, instilled in him by his maternal grandfather, the judge. His attitude towards social structure is very different from that of his old-fashioned, traditional, upper-class parents. His role in the novel is to act as a conscience for his mother, questioning her unjust treatment of the cone gatherers, and his defence of the cone gatherers frustrates her. Roderick is portrayed as a pilgrim in his quest to promote Christian values, and he feels the need to atone for his mother's lack of compassion towards the cone gatherers, so he sneaks into the wood to take them cake. However, he has to abandon this mission because of Durer's evil presence close to the hut. At the end of the novel, Roderick is rescued from his precarious treetop perch, and this provides the reader with hope for the future, 
because he has survived and he is willing to embrace social change despite being a member of the landed gentry. In other videos on the Cone Gatherers, we look at a quote-by-quote -quote guide to the novel and some key themes for 10 mark questions and essays. See you next time. If you found this or any of our other videos useful, it would be great if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for your support.